Hi, my name is Bernard Parsons, I'm from Bcrypt, and I'm going to talk about proving end-user device health uh, using the remote attestation protocol and a security-focused operating system called Paradox. So, starting off with a few high-level concepts, if we have an end-user device, uh, to carry out remote attestation we're going to want some form of measured boot. So this is about gaining confidence in the integrity of the software that is executing on that end user device. And once I have that measurement, I can interact with an attestation server, which can confirm for me that the device is in a known good state. Um, I can either use that uh, result locally as a client device and continue the boot process or decide not to, uh, but we can also use that measurement uh, to control access to online applications and services. So an application server can be configured to uh, interact with an attestation server so that it gets confirmation of the health of an end user device before it provides access to um, applications and services. So if we go into a bit more detail about the measured boot, and this is the standard operating system model, it will start off with typically secure boot process. So here the firmware of the uh, device that's initiated as part of the boot process interacts with the trusted platform module, to, which is a hardware root of trust, the TPM, to first of all gain confidence in the, uh, the firmware itself and then initiate a chained boot process whereby each software component that's loaded is responsible for testing the integrity of the next system to be loaded. Um, and it does that by computing cryptographic hashes of the software um, and those hashes are tested against uh, the TPM, the, the hardware root of trust. So we can have a high degree of confidence in the measured boot process because it's reinforced by that cryptographic process, um, because it's chained uh, right back to the hardware root of trust and, and, we, and reliance on the TPM module. Uh, but the trust boundary changes um, at, at the top of that measured boot process or the, the level of trust. So um, as far as third party drivers um, and third party applications are concerned, we then have to rely on and the standard operating system model on different mechanisms. So we have to think about driver signing, um, and that, that's subject to compromise. There are issues around certificate substitution and uh, giving certificates to, mal, uh, to bad actors. Whitelisting is a mechanism which is you know has a value, but it also uh, can be circumvented. And, and of course, antivirus uh, can't keep up with, with all uh, malware specimens. So we have a different level of trust that we're able to, to apply to these mechanisms albeit they are still of course all mechanisms worth using um, but we have much less confidence in so indeed if a, if a device is going to be attacked it's, it's far more likely that it's going to be attacked at that level so if we're using the measured boot um, measurement to uh, facilitate a remote attestation protocol we're saying something about the health of the early system but we're not saying something about the health of the overall uh, device the paradox uh, model starts off with exactly the same mechanism, so we use the secure boot process and chain through to a trusted boot so we get confidence using the hardware root of trust in all of the early system components. Um, but we then chain through to something that we call trusted execution. Um, so here we're going to check the integrity of the system drivers files as well as third party drivers using a process that's called block level validation. So as any software is read from uh, the device, the storage of the device at the block level, we're computing hashes and testing those hashes against a hash table uh, to check for the validity of those blocks of uh, system files. And uh, that hash table is stored within the trusted boot process. So again, we have this connection back to the hardware root of trust. As far as applications are concerned, all of the applications are signed and the signature, the certificates are managed through our management platform and um, each time an application is launched we, we check the validity of, of that binary application um, and again that is undertaken by something that's ex executing within the system which has its um, uh, root uh, connected of trust connected back uh, to the remainder of the, the 
boot process, the measured process. So our measured execution in this context um, extends through the complete software stack. So all of the early system components right through to the third party application. So we can have a high degree of confidence in the integrity of everything that's executing on the end user device. And we can use that uh, measurement as part of a remote attestation protocol, which indeed we do. So if we think about what that buys us for the standard model, if I have an end user device, it's, it's passing happily, it's, it's measured boot uh, process and, and attestation, and that can occur even if it has malware, if that malware resides outside of the measured boot process in something like a third party application. Um, so that means that even if I have a compromised device, um, I may still get access to uh, an application server, even though the application server uh, has a policy uh, to try and control access to online resources only to healthy devices. Uh, whereas within the paradox model, because the measured uh, boot and measured execution extends through the entirety of the end user device uh, software stack, including applications, uh, that malware is going to be picked up as uh, not representative of a healthy device. So that anomaly will be detected as part of the uh, remote attestation process. And then you can have a policy in place which will either uh, prevent access to the online resources for that end user device um, or just um, cause an event to be uh, triggered for, for audit purposes for, for later investigation. So we've implemented remote attestation as uh, a, a, within a, a product we call Paradox, security-focused operating system. It was developed in collaboration with UK government and uh, is deployed now uh, widely across a number of organisations. Thank you.